Welcome to Electro Online. Our next problem is a train crossing a railroad crossing. Notice that the length of the train is 400 meters. The velocity when the train begins to cross the, uh, the crossing is 82.8 kilometers per hour, but the train is slowing down. And by the time the last car passes the railroad crossing, the train has slowed down to 18 kilometers per hour. And the question is, how long did it take for the train to pass the crossing? Again, using a graphical technique is a very good technique to solve this problem. Let's graph, uh, let's say velocity versus time is probably a good way to go. All right, let's do that. So there's velocity versus time. Now notice that the velocity in terms of kilometers per hour, we probably want to convert that to meters per second. So 82.8 kilometers per hour convert from kilometers to meters, so we want meters at the top, kilometers at the bottom, one kilometer is a thousand meters, and then converting from hours to seconds, seconds at the bottom, hours at the top, one divided by 3,600. Essentially, when you convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second, you simply divide by 3.6. So 82.8 divided by 3.6 equals 23 meters per second. That would be the initial velocity and then converting 18 kilometers per hour. Again, converting from kilometers to meters, one kilometer is 1,000 meters, and one hour is 3,600 seconds. So we take 18 divided by 3.6, and yes, that is five meters per second. All right. So we don't know how long it takes, that's the question, but we do know that uh, we go from the train, not we, but the train starts at 23 meters per second, the units here are meters per second, and slows down to 5 meters per second. So it goes from there, let me move that up just a little bit, there we go. All right, and so the train slows down to this point right here, in this amount of time, we just don't know what the time is, that's what we're looking for, but notice that the area underneath this curve will equal the total length of the train 400 meters and if we then divide the area up into two areas call this a1 which is the, the triangular portion underneath the curve and a2 is the rectangular portion we can therefore say that a1 plus a2 is equal to 400 meters the length of the train now, how do we find A1 and A2? Well, let's see here. We know that A1, by definition, is equal to 1 half, the base times the height, and A2, by definition, would be the length times the width of the rectangle. So let's go ahead and plug that into an equation. So we know that A1 plus A2 is equal to A1 is 1 half, the base, which is the time that it took, the base would be this distance right here, and the height of the rectangle would be from 23 to 8. The difference of that, that would be uh, 18, would be the difference between 23 and 5, I should say. And then we add to that the area of the second one, which is the length, that would be time, times the width, that would be the height of the rectangle, the width of the rectangle, which is 5. And A1 plus A2, we know is 400 meters, so we can say that 400 is equal to one half of 18 would be 9, so 9t plus 5t, or 14t is equal to 400, or t is equal to 400 divided by 14, and what would that be? 400 divided by 14, we get 28.6, that would be 28.6 seconds, so that would be the total time that the train takes to pass the railroad crossing. Again, it's pretty straightforward. We were given the length of the train, so we're given distance. We know the beginning and the end velocity. We convert that to meters per second. That makes sense then that we draw a velocity versus time graph. The height is velocity. We start at 23 meters per second. We slow down to 5 meters per second. Remember that the, the uh, slope of that line would be the acceleration of the train. In this case, a negative acceleration. We can add up the two areas. We know the two areas need to add up to 400 meters. The, area, the, the triangle is one half the base times the height. Remember that the base, which is also the length of the triangle, is equal to the time that it takes. That's the only thing we don't know here. So here we add the two areas, which is 400 meters. One half the base times the height. The height would be the change in the velocity from 23 down to 5. And here that would be the height of the, of the, um, 
the rectangle times the time which is the length of the rectangle and that's how we solve for time so it's pretty slick these uh, graphical methods they work quite nicely that's how we do it